Coming up next on Good Morning El Paso, a dark country road may be to blame for a fatal crash late last night in Far East El Paso. We have the latest from our Around the Clock news team. Also, another deadly crash early Sunday as a wrongway driver collides head on with another vehicle in Northeast El Paso. My four dogs, and I'm going to put them in my car and I'm going to leave and hope that they can save my house. Homes in the western part of the country are being threatened this morning as firefighters battle an outbreak of wildfires. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. One of the biggest fires burning near Sacramento is still only 5% contained, and experts warn this is still the early part of what could be a long, intense fire season. The firefight is in full force right now. Planes and helicopters attacking the flames from above, and a tough battle below as firefighters try to get ahead of an unprecedented or unpredictable opponent. And we'll get to the latest on that fire that threatens 150 Northern California homes in a bit. But first, a very good morning to El Paso, Las Cruces, and Juan de San Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning, everyone. Let's get to Crystal Clyde and talk about our forecast because it's looking pretty good if you like it hot. Exactly. Crystal, we're going to see those temperatures today. Uh, that is right. We saw some triple digits over the weekend, and it's looking like today not much different. Let's start off with your conditions outside this morning. Getting ready for sun up right now, 75 the temperature, and your winds just 8 miles per hour. A relative humidity looking healthy. We've got moisture still at 53%. In Las Cruces, 70 your temperature currently and 61% for the relative humidity outside. Now on your clouds and radar map, we aren't starting with rain this morning, but remember last week's pattern. We didn't start with the rain, but we didn't see it move in late day, overnight. Today's forecast, very similar, about a 20% chance of scattered storms ahead. We're going to talk about that rain chance, but not just for today, into the days to come in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Crystal. One motorcyclist is dead after a crash on a dark county road. From our Round the Clock news team, it happened on O'Leary Drive in Far East El Paso near Montana just before 9 o'clock last night. According to the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, a Toyota was turning, in on, or was turning into the desert in that area when they hit the cyclist. The rider was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Only one person in the truck was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. There were five passengers total. As of right now, no charges have been filed and the investigation continues. A head-on collision leaves a woman dead. It happened just before 2 a.m. on Loop 375 South and Railroad Sunday morning. Police say 35-year-old Lizette Gutierrez was driving on the wrong side of the highway when she collided head-on with another car. As you can see from the video, both of the vehicles were destroyed. Gutierrez died at the scene. The other driver was taken to University Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say alcohol may have been a factor in this crash. Police also responded to a motorcycle crash overnight Sunday in Central. It happened on I-10 in Geronimo, right in front of Bassett Center. Police say the man was speeding when he lost control of his motorcycle. The 22-year-old crashed his bike into the center concrete median. He was ejected from the bike and landed on the other side of the highway in the eastbound lanes. The man was rushed to UMC with life-threatening injuries. And we're learning more this morning about that ATV crash in Mexico that left an El Paso woman dead. It happened Friday afternoon in Puerto Penasco, just south of Tucson. The woman, 20-year-old Cindy Valeria Cruz. These are photos sent to us by a viewer. Mexican news agencies report that she was riding with two other friends on an ATV when she was speeding and lost control. This is a photo of rescue crews responding to the crash scene. Cruz leaves behind two-year-old twin girls who you see here. An investigation is currently underway and we're told the family is trying to find a way to transport her now back to El Paso to bury her. A frightening warning from El Paso Crime Stoppers. They're asking for your help finding a man who they say had two separate fits of road rage that led to shots being fired. The first incident happened in May, the other in June. Police say in both incidents the victims were driving on the highway when they cut the man off. Now they say the man began to tailgate and follow the victims and that's when things escalated. Police say both times the suspect reached for a handgun and fired at both the victims' vehicles. The suspect fled the scene. Fortunately, no one was injured. Police say the man is a white or Hispanic with a thin build in his 20s. He's driving a dark-colored 1990s model sports car. 
If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. The number is right there on your screen. Firefighters are in a fierce battle against wildfires this morning. New fires erupting in the west over the weekend. Hundreds of evacuated homeowners are very grateful for the cooling temperatures overnight. ABC's Bazi Kanani has the very latest on the battle in this especially difficult fire season. Fight in full force. Planes and helicopters attack from above and a tough battle below as firefighters try to get ahead of an unpredictable opponent. Fire is a living, breathing organism. You know, you never know exactly what it's going to do and where it's going to go. Hot, shifting winds and steep slopes among the challenges for the more than 1,000 firefighters in hard to reach terrain about 45 minutes northeast of Sacramento. The Lowell fire burning so hot you can see it from space. I'm very worried about my house and my, yeah, this is, my, this is all, all I have right here, you know. The house he built himself is now in the hands of firefighters. As flames approach, crews get set to defend the home, clearing out trees and brush. One of about 2,000 structures threatened, forcing hundreds to evacuate. I'm going to grab my four dogs and I'm going to go in my car and I'm going to leave and hope that they can save my house. This fire season has turned into an exhausting one. 5.6 million acres burned so far compared to just 1.6 million acres last year. We're definitely at you know, the peak of summer. Even though we're in July, we're experiencing conditions we would typically see later in the year. Experts warn each year this war is getting harder to win as more people build homes in fire-prone areas and as more flames are put out before they can naturally burn off the dry trees and brush building up. Bazi Kanani, ABC News, Washington. A nationwide trend is here in the borderland. We're talking about a new way to entertain a party, get a good workout, and have fun all at the same time. Good morning, El Paso's Denise Olivas is standing by with a preview. Denise? Good morning, Stephanie. If you haven't heard of Bubble Busters, then today we're giving you a look at what could easily be one of the funnest things you'll want to do this summer. Can I get down like this? All right, now I don't think I need to explain much more. This new form of recreation is quickly making its way across the nation. Just last week on Good Morning America, some of the anchors tested out bubble soccer. Now two El Paso men have brought the fun here to El Paso, so you're secured inside that bubble with a harness. The only thing outside the bubble are your legs from your knees below, allowing you to run. Once you're strapped in, the soccer game begins. Co-owner Joe Ray Sanchez says it's the first of its kind here in the Sun City. Daddy, are you gonna bring something to El Paso that El Paso doesn't have. Uh, we started back in April and our main focus was to try and produce more of a healthier lifestyle and to break the mold in El Paso that there isn't anything to do. Bubble Busters is currently renting out its balloons. You can find out all the details on our website, kvia.com, and you'll find that in our links mention section. So I think we should all just give it a try this summer, right? It sounds like a lot of fun, Denise. I'd be willing to do it. All right. Thank you. All right. And some of our very own here at ABC7 gave bubble soccer a try already. None other than our sports guys, of course. Sports director Danny Mata and reporter Luke Lidden went head to head in a friendly. Well, did they survive? We'll have their showdown tonight in our sportscast. And now let's take a look at traffic this morning. This is Loop 375 and there is an accident there involving three vehicles. From what we understand, it's in the eastbound lanes going on to Loop 375 from the spur. And still ahead here on Good Morning El Paso, we have a lot to get to. Fiat Chrysler has settled with safety regulators over hundreds of thousands of its Ram pickups and Jeeps. We'll have the details. And a little later, Mexico has the ball right now where they want it as they took on Jamaica in the Gold Cup Finals. We have some highlights coming up. And the Kai has your detailed forecast, Crystal. And a good forecast it is once the temperatures start to cool. I'll let you know when that is after your break. Thanks, Crystal. This is ABC7 where news comes first.